Hello and welcome back to another fresh HD video. Today we have another game of the week and it is part of the 12 days of Christmas as per usual. So here we have Southampton vs Chelsea. So two game of the weeks today. Um, it should be up today. If not today then it's definitely late today being around 12 o'clock-ish. Moving into the next day, so um, I, this was meant to be scheduled for today, but the BBC Sport website, which I do use for my match facts and statistics, really didn't like to get their match preview out early for this game on the 28th. So unfortunately, I couldn't really get it up as early as I wanted it to. Videos will resume as normal tomorrow, though, at nine o'clock and two o'clock, which is the 12 days of Christmas schedule. Not my normal schedule, but my 12 days of Christmas schedule. So anyway, let's get right into it. Chelsea won six of their last eight league meetings between these teams in the League and Cup. The Blues have won on four of their last five visits to Southampton in all competitions. So, um, well, the Blues, well, Chelsea, of course, have got a good record against Southampton. Southampton, they just pushed themselves all the way up to fourth after Chelsea beat, formerly fourth, West Ham United on the Boxing Day game. Of course, it's the last game of both of them in the 2014 calendar. So, this is certainly an interesting affair because it could decide where Chelsea are whether they're on top of the league um, going into 2015 and whether Southampton are in Europa League, not even Europa League or Champions League spot. So it's whether they're in a European or no European place. And that is literally from fourth to sixth. Fourth to sixth seems like a, such a broad term. Sixth, nothing at all, unless, of course, Europa League does go into sixth after the Capital One Cup. Fourth, Champions League. It's such a broad, broad open gap, isn't it, to be honest? And to carry on, Saints have claimed one victory in their last 11 uh, League and Cup games against the Blues. So, not great for Southampton. The news isn't amazing. And, well, they've just started to pick up a little bit more form again, winning a few games and that after their five games in a row loss streak. But will they be able to get the better of Chelsea? I'm not seeing it, to be honest. Seven of Graziano Pelé's eight Premier League goals have been scored at home. He has not scored in a top flight away match since August. Oh, So that is a shame. Graziano Pelé likes St Mary's, but this game isn't away. It isn't St Mary's, so it's positive news to him. Southampton have won all 10 Premier League games in which they have taken the lead. They are the only team yet to drop points from a winning position. Well, the only team yet to drop points from a winning position. Sorry, they haven't. Uh, they haven't dropped any points from when they've taken the lead. And to continue on the Graziano Pelle talk, he had a great start the other day. It was like so many games played and he was only 20 goals behind the amount of games he's played in top flight football over Feyenoord, Serie A, etc, etc. And um, it's... It's an interesting stat, to be honest, Pele, and he is an interesting player. He's got a few games now without really, really getting into it, getting into the goals, as he started off this season so well. Hasn't really scored many in the past five weeks about now, um, but he's still a good player, and he is an young. That is a problem. He isn't young, young, young. He's about 29, 28 now, isn't he? The Saints have kept... Clean sheets in six of their last nine top flight matches at St Mary's this term. So, this year, Southampton have been one of the best teams to keep clean sheets. Except for the past six games. They haven't kept a clean sheet in their past um, five games, was it? Or six games or something like that. Shane Long has netted in three of his last four Premier League starts against Chelsea. Of course, that isn't all for Southampton. He hasn't played one for Southampton yet against Chelsea. Most of them were against for West Brom and maybe for Hull. I don't know whether he scored any for Hull, but West Brom for sure. The Blues have kept clean sheets in six of their last seven Premier League games. They've conceded just one first half goal in their last 14 top line matches in their 2-1 win at Liverpool on the end of November and they have won six Premier League games 2-0 this season including each of the last three games so 
2-0 is a favoured scoreline for Chelsea at the moment. And Chelsea do look to continue in their winning ways to try and win the league title. They're not going to have an unbeaten season. Newcastle got the better of them. And guess what game? That was the first game where Matic didn't start. And Newcastle won. Chelsea have scored 11 goals from set pieces this season. The joint highest figure in the division along with Crystal Palace and West Brom. So they are good at set pieces. Crystal Palace and West Brom are the other good set-piece teams. Now, you expect set-piece teams. You expect teams who look only threatening at set-pieces to really be teams like West Brom and Palace. In this case, it's Chelsea as well. So, um, it's certainly an interesting one, that, because Chelsea don't really seem to be the sort of team that would really, really, really take advantage of every single set piece. They seem to be the sort of team that would have the flair to create the goals from open play, but apparently not. Maybe that's why they're top of the league, because they're incredibly clinical, not only in open play, but in set pieces as well, as other higher teams are only seeming to be clinical in open play. Oh, and look at this. It is another set piece, but this time Southampton's way, as Chelsea can see the penalty 70 minutes in. So... Uh, Chelsea, will they win the league this season? There's a long way to go yet. We're only 18 games in. I'll say only 18 games in. That's a massive, almost halfway through the season already. Wow. It's amazing. Once you get past the 10 game mark, you're suddenly like, wow, this is actually going really quickly. And then once you get past the 20 game mark, you feel like you're towards the end of the season. And it is quite amazing how quick every single Premier League season goes. It's almost like they come and go. Like They haven't even been away in a way it doesn't even feel like it's been a gap since last season they just seem to constantly span and that is also why some people want like these two seasons divisions so where they play each other four times and it classes down as one season and that is something that Spencer did as well he looked at football in a different way so current champions Man City he looked at football over history and Aston Villa made it into like the Champions League and stuff like that. And you can see how gradually Aston Villa, as you went backwards in time, added up all the scores and league tables from every single season backwards in time. You saw how Aston Villa actually were, in fact, progressively going up the table, which meant progressively they've got worse when you look at it in perspective like that. What do I think this game will finish out as? I think it's going to be a Chelsea win uh, or maybe a draw. Hmm, Southampton win, yeah. ah, this is a uh, difficult one, I don't think Southampton will win, no, I can't see Southampton winning, although, no, I, 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 you see, I've got a feeling Chelsea will slip up again sometime soon, they're due another loss, they will slip up again sometime soon, and they'll end up messing up their title hopes if they do, but, ah, oh. Is this going to be the team that they slip up against? The team that are in fourth? The team that are only a mere... I say a mere. They're in fourth and they're 13 points behind. I don't... Oh, it's becoming a two-horse... Oh, my God. Look at that goal. Look at that goal from Ramirez. It went down as a bloody Ramirez goal. Absolutely unbelievable. From the halfway line. I wish I could do that. It was a good ball. Just forced to just totally fumble it. No clean sheet for them and... That's a killer that is, imagine me. I wish really I really wish I could do that. It looks like a sick goal, doesn't it, man? That is class. Either way, I think Chelsea will either draw or win it. I'm sort of sliding towards a draw for some reason. I don't know if it's just my gut instinct, but I think Chelsea are, uh, they're due another loss and I've got a bad feeling for them that they are gonna lose again sometime. But anyway, that with that being said, I think that's gonna bring this time and this episode to an end, this episode of Game of the Week, I'll leave you with a bit of music, as usual, Rogue Electronic Walk, if you don't know what it is, but gossip-wise, just before we end this, because the transfer window begins soon, January, it's so close now, that's so, so quick, and just one bit of transfer news, Adnan Yanazai looks like he could be on his way to PSG, Yanazai was superb under David Moyes last season, but just hasn't performed for Van Hal, really, has he? So, Yanazai looks like he could be moving away. Arsenal are closing in on the signing of 27-year-old Edinson Cavani. That would be insane. But that brings this episode to an end. I did like watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you smash the like button. And I will see you next time.